Good morning, hockey lovers, and welcome to the Scored Sofa. My name is Seth. I'm going to be the host for the weekend. We invited a, a bunch of excited hockey experts to, uh, to guide you to the, all the action of the finals of the 2021 European Cup. This is an uh, initiative by Scored, the leading hockey platform worldwide. Uh, and as for every great initiative, we, uh, we have great partners. So I'd like to, uh, to thank Ethnicraft for uh, uh, offering us these, uh, this amazing uh, setup, uh, sofas, chairs, and everything. Um, as well as Duvel Mochat and Blauer de Koning, the, uh, who made it possible to use this uh, incredible venue, uh, the nice brewery in the middle of, uh, of Antwerp. And uh, last but not least, the EHF, the European Hockey Federation, uh, it goes without saying that without their support, we wouldn't be sitting here and uh, there actually wouldn't be a tournament to talk about. So, um, and then let me introduce you uh, to the guy next to me, um, uh, my teammates, my friends, uh, a very good hockey player, and, uh, <laughs> and for most, um, a big hockey expert. Welcome, uh, Thibaut de Kerbel. Yeah, thank you for having me, Seb. Nice, uh, nice for you to, to be here. I'm Before. really excited. What a nice location. It's uh, in the city of Antwerp. Best <laughs> team in the world, eh? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very fine, eh? Very excited for these, uh, these finals today. Um, I, I went to Amsterdam to see some yeah, of the games. And, uh, yeah, it was really uh, a very nice tournament, well organized. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here and uh, talk about these two last games of this uh, fantastic European uh, Cup. All right. I know you're a very passionate uh, guy. You love to, uh, to watch games with a lot of passion. Are you already uh, over the fact that, uh, that Belgium lost the, the semis? Oh, it was really heartbreaking, uh, <laughs> really seriously. I, I, I was there and I thought we, uh, it's in a pocket. Eh? They, they were winning, they were winning uh, at, I think, four minutes of, of, of the final whistle. Uh, yeah, and then that, that last penalty corner, uh, it was heartbreaking. And then those shootouts, I think uh, my heart was bouncing at uh, 200 uh, beats <laughs> per minute, I think. Um, Check. Yeah, I, I, it, it was really heartbreaking afterwards as well. I saw some of the players and, and, and I, when you know them and, and you know how, how they were feeling at that moment, you saw yeah. this, this glittering in their eyes and, and I was disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see you already looking to the to the side. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, we yeah. should introduce our first guest for today. Yeah, I will introduce him. Uh, he's a goalie. He has uh, 71 caps for the German national team. What Very impressive. 72, no? 71, 71. 71. Oh, 71. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, he has his own Wikipedia page. Very important, but it's <laughs> wrong there. So somebody should correct it. Uh, he just won the Belgian Hockey League with Dragons, his former club, because he's going to play somewhere else next year. He's a really nice guy and a true legend of the hockey game. So uh, welcome, Tobias Walter. Thanks. I really appreciate your words. Um, super happy to be here. It's, uh, as you said, it's an amazing location, um, seeing that for the first time. And I'm really excited uh, about the talk we have and also about uh, the games coming up. When you see all these games in the European Championship, and I mean, you've, you've been there, do you miss it? Of course, I miss it a bit. Um, it's always nice to play a tournament like this, um, especially a European Championship is, is really special because you play against your neighbors of your countries and you know them inside out. It's, it's playing, like, I know Felix said it yesterday after the game against uh, the Netherlands, it's playing like against brothers because you know each other so well and every game can end in a draw or yeah, because you know each other that well, so yeah. with Felix, really you meet Felix and I. Felix and I, your yeah, teammate sorry, at sorry. Dragons as well. Yes, yeah, it was just one for the audience. Former, <laughs> former, former teammate, teammate. <laughs> former teammate now. Yeah. Well, you say you play against your neighbors, but what's your favorite game? Where, who do you prefer to play, or what is the nicest game that you always like? It had that little more edge. Um, as a German, I have to say it's a, it's a true classic to play against the Netherlands, because um, of course Belgium is rising since the last 10 years but even before i was not involved with this but so uh, the the classic derby is germany netherlands and that was always a special game of course against belgium we also had special games but uh, 
most of the time they weren't that successful. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be honest. On that. <laughs> they did great work for the last ten years, and now they exactly. are. So, all right, let's uh, let's dive into the the first game of today, uh, Belgium against England. Let's let's have a look, and I have to uh, see that I don't say uh, anything wrong. Let's have a look at uh, at the at the games coming up to this game. Uh, so Belgium, they started with a with a win against Spain. Uh, they lost again against uh, England. So it's already interesting to uh, to uh, to see. They already played against each other, and they won against Russia 9-2. And then, as you said, they lost uh, after shootouts against uh, the Netherlands. While uh, England, they uh, won their first game against Russia 5-0. They beat Belgium in the second, uh, and they won in a, in a quite exciting game against Spain, 3-2. Uh, I think the goalie was even not anymore on the field for the uh, for the last uh, goal, um, and uh, and they lost 3-2 against uh, Germany. Let's maybe uh, go to the yeah uh, the fact that they already played against each other. Um, do you guys think that this is uh, an advantage? Uh, obviously, they know each other very well, but uh, they already played uh, each other this tournament. I mean, we just had a chat uh, before this, and um, it's it was surprising that England won against Belgium, and um, I think we both agree that this will not happen again. Um, Belgium is too strong, um, individually better, I guess, and and fitter, um, and they have a bigger pool of experienced players, a bigger pool of players who can decide the game um, so yeah I think Belgium is gonna win uh, England did really really well uh, they also have a young team they have an extremely young goalkeeper um, Oli Payne who was actually quite surprised that yeah, exactly. he is number one but um, I saw that in a couple of practice games and pro leagues pro league games they played because he was always playing and I was already wondering and I was chatting to a few friends there in England and they said yeah he's doing really well and he confirmed this. Uh, he played a really good tournament. Um, not that much he can do against uh, the goals he conceded. He was really, really strong. And let's see if he can maybe make a difference today in the, in the game against Belgium. And how, how how come that? Because I, I saw the game against uh, so England Belgium, and honestly, it was it was deserved. I mean, Be Belgium was not yeah, was not have, good. You have to know that that England played a lot of practice games before going into the Euros, whereas Belgium didn't really play a lot of practice games, so England was further down their preparation for the Euros than Belgium was. I think that uh, Belgium as well, they see the summer as a marathon, uh, so they're really trying to go for the Olympics, and you cannot peak two times in, in two months. It's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So I think they went into the Euros with a different mindset as well, and England was really ready for this game, whereas you saw that Belgium, yeah, they were still struggling uh, defensively, they weren't really organized that game uh, but then they had the game against Russia as well they had a game against Holland where I think that they were very solid defensively so I think that those, those little mm. things that weren't set straight because of a lack of practice games that they managed to to, to, to get to it and that it will be a completely different game today yeah and uh, for England it's a totally different story because they had to peak at the Euros because for Olympic Games they will have a totally different team because exactly. Olympics they compete as GB and um, they haven't made a decision yet or no selection yet who is going to play Olympics. Maybe they have it internally, but yeah, there will be guys from, from Scotland and Wales coming in. And, and I mean, the best example is uh, Alan For uh, Forsyth from Scotland. He's one of the best goal scorers of uh, Team GB and he will take a spot of the guys from England. And yeah. uh, also a few Welsh guys are in there. So this is going to be really interesting if they are able to then peak with a new team in, in the next month. Do you know, do they train together already, Team <coughs> GB, or not? Because it's very weird, you have England and then okay, you have Team GB for the Olympics, mm -hmm. but they have to fit in that team in one month, or do they already train sometimes before? They have, uh, same like in Belgium, they have centralized program, but they always train with Team GB, always. So all the Scottish and Welsh players, they are fully into the program, and they have to choose by themselves if they want to prepare with their own country, like for example Wales competing at the Euros. So the Welsh players who are normally in GB, they have to choose if they want to keep on training with GB or they prepare with Wales for the Euros. It's totally up to them, but in general they all train together, not as Team England, but as Team GB. So if you're one of the best players, you can go with your own country, 
But if you're like, mm, you have to try to stay with Team GP probably. Yeah, it's it always depends how you have to talk to the coach. There has to be a proper communication and uh, if everything is clear and every, there's a proper line drawn, then I don't think there will be any, any problems with that. But yeah, they all have to decide that. They really have to think about this. Yeah, and, and because you both are convinced that uh, that they won't, won't happen again, like you said, that Belgium would, would win and take the bronze medal. What changes them? Because you said, okay, it's not the same mindset, not the same preparation towards the first game. Uh, we're a week farther. The fact that it's for a bronze medal, that changes everything. Um, the fact that Belgium will be better prepared now to, uh, to win it. Well, first of all, I think that when Belgium lost from Holland, it really hurt. That's and true. I think that they really, really, they really want to win now. Yeah. I think from now on, they want to win every game until the end of the Olympics. Uh, I, yeah, I, I saw it in their eyes uh, on Thursday. I think they're going to go for it 100%. Yeah. Every team wants to win every game. Every t especially at the Olympics, you want to win every game. Obviously, everyone wants to win the gold medal at the Olympics, but uh, there's a huge difference if, you're, if your mindset is right, if you're already, if you're ready for this, if, if the process of the team is, is far enough. But yeah, after seeing Belgium in the last couple of years, I think there's no doubt that they're going to win the bronze medal. Let's uh, see and let's let's dive into the the teams. Um, Toby, we asked you to uh, to have a look at um, uh, at the the England team, uh, as you know quite some players. Uh, you've you've chosen to to highlight three. Um, maybe you can clarify why you chose those three players to uh, to keep an eye on. Yeah. So first of all, it's uh, Zach Wallace, really young guy. Um, two years ago, he still played under 21s uh, Europeans. He Very is uh, playing. In a, in, a, in a low midfielder position, um, sometimes even dropping back in the defense. And he has a huge impact on the game. He's extremely skillful, extremely fast, um, which actually also fits on both other players. Um, <laughs> but they are in different roles. Uh, Ansel, Liam Ansel on the right, he's, he's the guy who's scoring the crazy goals. He has insane technique. He's the guy who's dribbling through the circle and, and lifting the ball, has a nice uh, 3D game. And he's a guy who can make the difference uh, in the circle. And uh, with Phil Roper, um, really experienced guy, um, also really technical, but he's a guy who can lead the team. He has the right mindset, he can push everyone, and he's like the controlling guy in the whole team. So these three players are for me, uh, they have the biggest impact on the team. Besides the keeper, I was I, I mentioned already. I was going to say so that will be again a new tester, uh, an important game for a young keeper against uh, probably the best drag flicker in the world for the moment. Um, so uh, yeah, that's another certainly another player to uh, to look forward for. All right, uh, shall we uh, go to to Belgium? Tip. Yeah. Same question for you. I picked three players. Uh, I didn't take the three players with the biggest impact of the team because we all know you have Arthur van Dore, you have Lloyd Lapart, you have uh, Simon Gugnard, you have all these great players. But I think it's going to be a really offensive game today for Belgium. Uh, and I think I picked three players, uh, Toby correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I picked three players that can offensively really do something uh, special. Uh, so Belgium has a real good collective, uh, but these three players they can do something magically suddenly. Uh, so Antoine Kina as a midfielder, uh, he's been incredible against Holland as well in the semi-finals. I think uh, yeah, he was uh, really amazing. He was amazing. Was he amazing. had that touch and he can dribble forward and he can go between two or three guys. And when he has a good day, I really, really like him. Uh, so uh, if he continues on, on his game on Thursday, uh, and it's, it's, he will be... It's so hard to defend him. Eh? You, you kind of know what he's going to do, you see it, but it's so fast that yeah. you, you just can't... He's Can't incredible. Yeah. And then I, I took uh, Nico de Kerpel. I know him quite well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I, he scored the, the, the only field goal against Holland last Thursday. He scored a, a, a beautiful goal against Russia as well. Comes out of injury. Uh, he also has that, that little edge that some other players don't have. Uh, plus, he's my brother, so I really hope he's going <laughs> to have a good game. Uh, and then I took uh, Florent Van Nobel. Uh, we don't talk about him enough, I think. He doesn't really 
stand out all the time, but this guy, I think you should watch him today because he never loses one ball. He, yeah. His passes are always accurate, his dribbles are accurate, he can be surrounded by five guys, he even comes out of it. He looks for PCs, he has nice passes, he doesn't complain ever to the referee, uh, and he's defensively and in the press also very, very good. So it's, it's also a teammate uh, of you, Toby. He's impressive, that guy. Eh? Yeah, I had the chance to play with him for three years, and he is so complete as a player, and he's also a guy, like, everybody knows him as a striker, uh, one of the most skillful strikers I've ever seen in my life, but this guy also play, can play defense. You he can played, also he played he on played, the left back. He, he uh, played left back uh, for Belgium in a couple of pro league games. This he can literally do everything. Uh, it, it's not said that he is every game the perfect player, but sometimes he's just floating around. But in a, in a special moment, he's there, and you need him for those special moments. Yeah, they call right. him the magician for something. Yeah. Exactly. I experienced it with Dragons. If if the game needed a big impact, he was there, and he he was the guy to do it. Maybe the fact that we don't always talk about him is because he's he's been the magician for uh, the last fifteen years, and he's always playing at the same level. You know, so we we kind of start to expect this from him, and it's hard to impress you when you when you always play at that level. So I think that's also one of the reasons we, we don't always, we talk about Arthur Van Doorn because he's, he was been, he's been rising for the last three, four years. Anton Kina because he's a youngster coming up. I think that's also one of the reasons that we, we don't talk about him enough, as you, as you say. Yeah, but I think he was so solid against, for me, these were the three uh, players that, that played their best game against Holland. Uh, and so I wanted to, to, to pick them for that reason. And also because I think that Belgium will have a, very offensive game and that England maybe will drop back a little bit and play on the counter. So if they have a good counter control, uh, they will be fine in defense, but they will need those three players offensively to, to make a difference. Exactly. And I also know, Tip, you're, you're very, uh, very big fan of your brother, but you're also very critical <laughs> to him, um, uh, yeah. as you are. Uh, I think maybe if we look at the, the semi-final, he made an incredible goal, uh, but then I think maybe also his, his passion and the fact that he's, he's still young uh, at the end. I made a, a bit of a, a harsh tackle, which led to the, the, um, the penalty corner. So maybe that's something he still needs to, to learn um, towards yeah, the future. He, uh, he got better and better in it, and I think it was a... You know, it's a mistake it was, it was everybody can make. Yeah, it's of course, a, yeah. It's a high emotional game. Um, you're on the edge, and then the, the smallest mistakes can decide a game. No, but like that happens to everyone. Every big player made mistakes in his life. So, I also think if it was really a game on the HA, if you saw, yeah, uh, if you saw the van and when yeah, and, and how they all yeah. reacted, and, and yeah. when the referee didn't blow for them, how all the players were like, "What is this?" And I think yeah, I've definitely. never seen them so on the edge as as in in this game, the the Belgium team for sure. Yeah. But I think also that it comes from feeling. I think they're still not 100%. I think they're at 80, 90% the Belgian team and they feel it themselves, but they still want to win, but they know they aren't there yet. And I think that is a little bit of the frustration and they're yeah. trying to shout themselves into the games. So uh, it's okay. I mean, again, it's, this summer is a marathon for, for all the teams competing in the Olympics as well. They have to be there and that's the most important part. And then, okay, the Euros it would have been really nice to win it, but now they focus shifted already and, and it's, all on, on the Olympics now for them, I think. Yeah, especially you have to be careful as well with injuries. Uh, Belgium had a couple of injuries now in the uh, semi final, uh, Thomas Briels in play. Yeah, you don't want to risk anything for, for possible Olympic Games. Eh? So, but another I think player didn't who was play for another reason. Eh? They, the coach always put one player on the bench that yeah. doesn't play. So, I mean, it's, it's not. Yeah, but even then, eh, if you play with one less, yeah, yeah, yeah. at Euros, you can use 18. Olympics, you can use 16, a huge difference. Of course, they want to prepare, but on the other hand, you want to win. Um, but if someone is injured, you have, try to have to handle it. And these these things, they all can can play a role in this. Maybe a little pronostic or what? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, it's it's a hard one, but um, yeah, I guess for you guys, it's it's less difficult. You already made your mind, or uh... yeah, for me, it's. Uh, 3-0 for Belgium. Goals okay. by Alexander Hendricks, Nico, the Kerpel, obviously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tom Ball. Yeah, I, would go, I, I would go for an old-fashioned 5-4 for, 
for Belgium. Um, you want to know all the goal scorers? Or <laughs> <laughs> I stick to 5 4, and uh, yeah, you owe me a lot of beers when, uh, when I get it right. Huh? Yeah, for me, a, a duvel for me <laughs> if I get it right. Oh. Take it. There we go. What about um, you, Toby? 5 2 for Belgium. Okay. England will score two goals, but not, not four. <laughs> not a chance. All right. And uh, at the end, England will take the keeper off, and that's when Belgium scores two more goals. Who will play as a keeper for Belgium? Will they put Van Asch, which yeah. would be the obvious choice, or would they give uh, minutes to Van Doren to Van play Asch in a higher. Play. Yeah? No doubt? No doubt. Maybe you know more already, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, why I'm just the asking the question because it's a good opportunity <laughs> to play a, a, a game for a medal, but still. It's the bronze medal, and you can give minutes to Van Doren, maybe. I'm, I'm uh, not sure. I've never experienced Belgium or Shane McLeod as a coach who is a fan of rotating. Yeah. I like played against Russia. Even, yeah, he okay, he played against Russia. But even when you're in a game up like 5 6 1 or 5 0, he's not the guy who's switching the keeper. No, he wants to win 10 0. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not that guy. And, and for other countries, this might happen eh? that they say, okay, like some. Like the Dutch women, they, they swap their goalkeeper every quarter. Of course, they have to make their Olympic selection uh, still. Um, Scotland women as well, they, they, they rotated. Um, Germany rotated uh, against France. But uh, I haven't experienced Shane McLeod as a guy who's a fan no. of rotating. He sticks sure. to what he knows and... Uh, I understand the question because if you look, it's, it's, it's a luxurious problem for Belgium. Eh? Louis van Doorn is, is such a great goalie. Uh, he plays for years at the absolute top level, at club uh, club level, but he's just he has the bad luck to be to be uh, in the same generation or kind of in the same generation as. Oh, he's that young. He's gonna yeah, play okay, for ten more years, so okay, yeah. but he'll have his chance. He's, he's second goalie for what for yeah. five years now already. Um, so I understand the question because that guy is so good. It's a shame to to see him on the on the bench. I mean, you know the feeling, you know the fact that when you sometimes you have a, uh, you're really good, but you just have someone who is a little bit better and uh, it can be so frustrating. And that, that's, a, that's a problem of being a keeper. Yeah, you only got one spot, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, maybe one, one more question because I think we slowly have to go to, uh, to see the national anthems. Um, it, it's a bit of a, of, a, of a discussion point for a while, I think. Do you feel that Belgium might have lost a bit of the momentum uh, having yeah, having had a, a year break, basically, um, looking at the, the momentum they had uh, when when being uh, world champion, European champion, I think at that moment everyone was fearing Belgium. Um, you feel now it's it's a little bit more difficult. Um, do we, do you guys think that this year has made a a huge difference in the in, in the in the quality differences? No, I think that last year they were the they they were the best team in the world by far. I think they were. Miles, I'm sorry, but they were miles before Germany. There maybe Australia was 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 next to them, but I thought that by far they were the, the better team. And indeed, this year, uh, the old players, the experienced players, got a year older. It's a quite old team, um, so yeah, they might have lost a little bit of the momentum. But I think if you see how they build up momentum again during the Euros, it's not perfect yet. But I think they they will be there on the Olympic Games. But the problem is that yeah, Germany will be there as well, Holland will be there as well, and, exactly. and I, I don't know about Australia because they had some some difficulties with the Corona. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it really can go both ways eh, for Indeed. for Australia uh -huh. and Argentina. It's it's completely different preparation, but they might be very uh, very fresh and very uh, very ready. We'll have to see. I don't we'll believe see. in it in All that right. kind of preparation. Cool. Um, then I can um, I can. Um, close it down for now. Uh, we're gonna be uh, watching the game uh, all together. Um, enjoy a little beer or maybe uh, a little duvel or maybe it's a bit too early, but, uh, but anyway. Um, it's 12 o'clock. For all the already. people, you can, you can watch, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can watch the, the game live on uh, Euro Hockey TV. Uh, enjoy the game and uh, please uh, follow us back for the, for the after game discussion at 11.30. And, uh, and the preparation uh, towards the final uh, layer today. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.